Glory, hallelujah. Without any further ado, we tried to get him only 15 minutes, but now he has 23 minutes. My friend, my pastor, our buddy, Pastor Emeritus David Ash, come share with us. God bless you. Well, I'm an old man now. <laughs> Found it out this last week. Drove eight hours one day, and when, when, when I got to the Moore residence, I, I told Peggy, I said, uh, I'm going to need some days of rest. And that's what I've been doing. It's a shame, but up there the cell phone won't ring. Isn't that a shame? I just, <laughs> I just hate that so bad that the cell phone won't even ring. I'm tickled to death. It's been been most rewarding for me and for Peggy, my wife, to be here. Uh, I, I, I've thought so much about this, and uh, I, I'm in debt to so many people in my life and a lot of them are here today, you folk, you know, who helped me to have 14 years of a great life, and I have great memories, you know. Memories are a gift of God. You, 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 you can keep your memories, the devil can't rob you of them. You don't keep them in chest of drawers, wrote on paper, or in your pocketbook, or billfold, where you've jotted it down, you keep them here. You know, and uh, I have such great memories. I, I I feel like I'm so in debt to so many people. Most of all, to the Lord Jesus, who who saved my soul and gave me my sins, made me a new creature, and uh, has thrilled my soul down through the years to live for Him. Uh, I, I I just wanted to read two verses of Scripture this morning there. They're from Acts. Uh, they, they talk about the early church and its work. And it said they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house and did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for the word which gives to us a word picture of, of your church and what you intended it to be. And I pray you would bless this word to our hearts today and our fellowship with each other and the breaking of bread. And may it be a great Lord's day because you're with us, I pray. Amen. Before I begin, uh, uh, I said something about memories. Uh, used to be a older gentleman come to church here. And he, he came for years, sat back on the left side back there, kind of toward the back, lived up the road here on the left, sat out and watched the traffic go by. He said Wednesday was the heavy day for the interstate. When he talked, Buddy Kathy talked with his hands, you know, that finger. And I would go by and he'd be sitting in his swing and had a little cover on it and I'd sit in the other side. And over and over he'd tell me what they just sang about. He said, Preacher, we can't even walk without any holes our hand. What a testimony and what a wonderful guy, this, this guy. Uh, memories keep us going, you know. Memories keep us going. The good ones that we store up, that God gives us. Uh, in, in the early 60s, I, I, I was 19 years old. That's been a long time, folks. But I remember standing on the front porch and uh, I, I was fixing to move to Georgia to pastor a church. I was 19 years old and my mom came out on the porch and 
she had been a single mother and reared my sister and I. And she had struggled a lot, I'm sure. You know, around the widow lady's house, money is about as scarce as old folks used to say, as hen's teeth. You know, they just wasn't in it. But I remember her coming out on the porch and we was fixing to get in the automobile and, and go to Georgia, and leave home. And, and, and she came out with her apron on and her, her hair was in a bun. And uh, she'd worked hard, her shoulders were stooped and the years had taken their toll. And, and she looked at me and said this, don't forget where you come from, boy. You, 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 you remember what I told you. It, it, it always rings in my ears after all these years. Right is right if nobody does it. And wrong is wrong if everybody does it. And, and then the old folks, this is kind of humorous, but they had another sin. And I've never been able to tie the two together down through the years. But she said to me, always wear good clothes and wear clean underwear. You might have a wreck. <laughs> Old folks said that. You, some of you remember that, you know. I, I don't know how you tie that together. It, it looked like to me if there was concern for a wreck that they'd be concerned for my, my welfare, you know, rather than clean clothes. But... But this was part of their life and part of what they said. I'm, I'm persuaded in the day in which you and I live and the church is under attack and God's people are and, and Satan's making sure it's rough for us and the road's bumpy in the Christian experience and the journey. That... that Jesus would say to us as the church today, don't forget where you came from. You know. Uh, remember what worked in the first church. You know. Remember what worked in the first church. First, uh, there's good fellowship. You, you, you know a Christian needs fellowship. Need to be together with somebody. It doesn't have to be a big deal. It just has to happen. It don't have to cost a lot. In fact, the cost can be meager. But the benefits are wonderful. If we can just be together. Be together. Fellowship. And that's what the early church did. And Jesus would say to you and I today, get together. Get together. The Bible said daily they came together for fellowship and breaking the bread. I used to go to Miss Brown's store every morning seven days a week, Sundays included. I'd be back for Sunday school, but when they opened then on Sundays, I went every day to check on a group of old men like myself. We knew all the answers to everything. All you had to do is submit your question. If you didn't, we'd advise you without any asking. We traded knives and swapped guns and talked about politics. And, but we, we, we did two other things. We had fellowship. And we cared about each other. And we ate together. That always brings something to pass when you do that. You know, we, we, we ought to include everybody, you know. And we, we did. We included everybody. 
so that some of what we are as Christians could rub off on those who aren't. You know, we, we, we just came together. Uh, I remember my phone ringing time and time again, and on the other end of the line, they'd say, Preacher David, so-and-so's going to the hospital. We know we don't come to your church, but could you show up the day we have surgery? I said, sure. I'll be there. We'd go pray together with them, you know. Pray together with them. And the Lord's saying to us, don't forget where you came from. Don't forget your heritage as a church. God's church has a rich heritage in what they did in their activities and drawing the net and winning the lost and caring for the needy and loving the unlovable. And so that's what we did. We should never stop. Never. Never. We, we, we'd pray at Miss Brown's store like we prayed at church. We, we prayed at Miss Brown's store. It, it, was, it was acceptable. They, they wanted it that way. We, we prayed with each other, you know. Those who weren't Christians held hands with us. They had needs. We cared about them. They knew we cared about them. They sensed it, you know. You know what the results of that fellowship and the breaking of bread and eating a fried egg and a pizza sausage and biscuit and gravy, drinking coffee resulted in? Folks got right with God. Folks got right with God. My wife had passed away. She is so lucky. She, she won two tickets to anywhere in the United States from Southwest Airlines. I thought, man, that's a great thing. I was tickled to death. So finally, we, we, we settled on going to California where my sister was. I'd been three or four times, but we decided we needed one more trip. We were getting older. So we get up one morning early and I go down the flyway and check my truck in there and uh, the little bus carries me over there and we get over there and I'm excited and we check her luggage and we, 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 we get up there to where this lady is and she said, sir, you flying with this lady? And I said, sure am. She said, not today, you're not. I said, why? She said, you just have one ticket. I said, no, I got two tickets. We're supposed to have two tickets. I'm part of this, you know. <laughs> I'm part of this. It's the benefits of being the, her spouse. I get to go. She said, well, there's a mistake. She said, now you can go for $900. <laughs> and I said, well, I've done been three times, and I don't care for California to start with. So I don't believe I'll be going today. And I called Flyaway. Same, same little bus came to get us and the same driver. We were the only two people on it going back to Flyaway's offices and where they had my truck. And he said, what happened? So I, I shared my story in. He looked at me straight in the eye. I'd never seen the fella before since. No name exchange or anything. He just said, when things like this happen in my life, fella, I consider it a God thing. I said, go on home. Don't worry about it. So I came home. Uh, I sat around and I finally said, I believe I'll call the mayor. Now, you'd had to know the mayor. He is a character. Boy, he's a character. But we as buddies, character or no character, we as friends. I, I always told my wife at that, I said, if I ever get in trouble, you go up to the store and get that bunch of old men. They'll get me out of this. They'll stick with me. They would have, too. 
So I called the mayor's house and Miss Catherine said, he's on the couch sick and uh, you want to talk to him? I said, no, I'd like to come if that's okay and be, be with you all a little while. And she said, come on. And I, I, I witnessed to the mayor for 10 years. In fact, he came to this church one Sunday morning and 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 I preached and gave an invitation and he is sitting back there about halfway and, and, and he took his cane and methodically and so intense he put it down and stepped out and I guess had other thoughts and stepped back. That's how close we came. But that day I went when he was sick and he was on the couch and I said to him, Mayor, you've drug this thing out too long, haven't you? He said, I sure have. I said, well, I'm going to get down on my knees here beside the, the couch and we're going to pray. And if you would, would you ask Jesus into your heart and tell him the bad things you've done, you won't forgive me? He said, I'll do it. And we did. As on Thursday, on Friday, I couldn't go to California, so I chose the next best. I went to Georgia to fish with my preacher friend. On Saturday morning, Friday night, the mayor got sick again, worse. Carried him to the hospital. Three weeks later, he died. I, I said to somebody, I know why I didn't go to California. You know, God things in our lives, fellowship, breaking of bread, being there, including everybody. Caring about them, loving them. This is what it's about. Fellowship, you know. Breaking the bread. Being together. That together thing. I, I, I could give you example after example uh, of folks that had terminal illnesses and we prayed with them and, and, and folks get to, got together. But another good example about the mayor is that Prior to his coming to the Lord, uh, we never talked about our differences. We, if, if, if one said, I'm a Christian, we respected him or her. And if the other said, I'm a Christian, they respected each other. And, and prior to that, uh, Larry Dunn, who's a Church of Christ and Shep, uh, he came here for years. In the morning for a week before this came to pass, they would encourage the mayor and talk to him. You need to call the preacher and talk to him, mayor. You're not well. And it's a, Christianity is a together business, folks. It's not about me. It's not about you alone. It's about us with God. And so he gives us this pattern and, and I think he would say, don't forget where you come from. Don't forget where you come from. Folks came to the Lord at the store and, and, and they, they shared. It was such a wonderful experience. One time while I was gone, I came back and they had gathered in for lunch, and I dropped in. And this fellow said, we did something while you were gone, and we're not sure it was right. And I thought, oh, my, what have they done? <laughs> I said, well, talk to me. Talk to me, Kenneth. He said, well, somebody's sick in the community, and we got a get well card. We made up money. Put it in an envelope. We signed your church's name and signed your name. We forged your name, preacher. <laughs> he said, we sent it to the sick. I said, do me a favor. Keep that up every time I'm gone. <laughs> you, you know, why, why, why can't we see that together we can overcome Satan and sin and the world by this fellowship and this breaking of bread and encouragement of each other. Why can't we see that? You know? That together we can do these things.
We can't do it by ourselves. And, and the Bible said they had fellowship and breaking of bread. They were together. They were together. The early church, the world spoke of them and said, Behold how they love one another. It was evident. It was so, so evident. Never be ashamed to fellowship and witness and speak out for God's kingdom. Never be ashamed of it. I love my wife. You love yours, you know. Uh, show her you love her. Make it known to her. Just verbal consent is not worth much, you know. Just not worth much. Prior to Peggy and I getting married, this friend of mine rags me all the time. He just picks at me constantly. And I'm, I'm good-natured. I don't pay him much attention. But I, I had preached that Sunday night, and he had come to church, and uh, another couple had, and they said, let's go to Wendy's and have a Coke and maybe some nuggets or, or something, and we did. We, we hadn't gotten there good that he started in on me. We, 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 we had said we were going to get married, but, oh, going to get married again, and, uh, you, you know, looks like to me Cupid shot you again, and started this in that restaurant. Then he looked at me and said, what, what do you got to say? I said, just this one thing. I said, lean across this table, Peggy, and kiss me. He said, oh, please don't do that. It's so embarrassing. So embarrassing. I said, it's not embarrassing to me. I said, it's been happening since Adam. Can't stop it now. And, and, and I said, I'll make a deal with you. One thing, he said, what's that? I said, if you'll quit, I will. I'll quit if you will. He said, you're embarrassing to me, David. His wife said, he hadn't always been a saint, David. I said, spill the beans. <laughs> Tell the story. Let me hear it. You know, let me hear it. Sometimes in life, we need to learn to be real rather than pretense all the time. We say, keep your best foot forward. Why not just be me? The disciples were real. Down the earth, uh, they, they, they had ambition. They were ambitious. We're ambitious. It just needs to be under control of the Lord's Spirit so we can be profitable servants. That's what it is. But the greatest thing about this is what the Bible said about the Lord. It said the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Think about that. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. The Lord adds to. The Lord adds to the church. When He does it, it's done right. It's good. It'll work. It'll run smoothly. Things will happen good and in order. And it will be great for the kingdom of God. When I came to this church in 98, I believe, I, I was sitting at home one day, and I was in the easy chair on a Sunday evening, and Bucky Carter called me and said, uh, Richard David, our preacher left, would, would you come up here and be our pastor? I said, no, I wouldn't. I'm not even interested in coming. I, I said, I'm going to retire and I'm going to do, go some places, my wife and I. And he said, okay. Next Sunday evening, about the same time, he called and said, we voted this morning for you to come. <laughs> 
show you how God works when we fellowship and interact and be together. And I said that wasn't our agreement. He said, I know it wasn't our agreement. But he said, you're coming, aren't you? I said, I'll come for a year. And at the end of the year, I'm going to leave if you don't have a preacher or if you have one. You've got to have a preacher by the end of the year. And I stayed 14. It was the most wonderful years of my life. It was the best years of my ministry. You're the greatest people I've ever pastored. We weren't perfect, but we let the Lord work with us to perfect us and help us so we could accomplish things. We, we worked faithfully together. You were cooperative. We saw things happen we never dreamed would happen. I was an electrician when I came here. I was still working. A and uh, where I worked, I met this lady named Donna Bruins. And, and I asked her one day, I said, you know the Lord. Do you go to church? And She's as honest as anybody I met. She said, no, preacher, we don't go to church and things aren't that good. And she said, we live in Texas. Poorest place you've ever been, she said. I remember her saying that. She said, but we worked. We went to church, loved God, and he loved us. We never missed a payment. We, we had a good life. We moved to Tennessee. Now we got a new house, a new car, a new truck. She said, we quit going to church. I said, would you come? She said, I'll think about it. She said, Bruce won't come because he don't like preachers. <laughs> I can understand that. You know, I can understand that. But she came. And Bruce started coming. And things got right. Did you know, and not many folks know this in this church, that Bruce and Donna Bruins brought more folks to this church than anybody else that's ever been here? Think about that. They, they, they worked hard. Right. Bruce Bruins is unorthodox, unpredictable. If there's ever been a character, he is. But he's so lovable and kind. Everybody that meets him falls in love with him and cares about him. And he's real. And folks came to church because he asked them and showed concern. Out of that family coming. The first children's church we ever had, Rihanna, their daughter, started it when she was 16 years old. She's undoubtedly... I've been in some big churches. She's undoubtedly the best children's worker I've ever worked with, bar none. What? Fellowship, breaking of bread, coming together. Forgetting the qualifications, the main thing is do we know Jesus? And he's working in our hearts and lives. If you'll catch them, the Lord will clean them. Did you know that? If you'll catch them, the Lord will clean them. I'm going to hush in a minute. I went uh, one Sunday evening, my wife had died and said, Henry, her first husband, had a sister, and she said, uh, since Henry died, I hadn't been there much to visit with him. Would you mind going with me? I said, no, don't, don't, don't expect you to sever all your relationships. That'd be unfair. We're Christian people. We ought to be willing to cooperate. So, so we drove over to Fosterville. And, and, and about the time we, I was pulling in the yard, she said, now I need to warn you. Her husband's a character. He, he's something else, David. I said, well, I've seen a few characters in my life. Might have been one myself at one time. 
So we went in, and he's sitting at the table drinking coffee and smoking a cigarette. And, and my, my wife went on in with her sister-in-law. And I sat down, and he hadn't said, hello, how are you? When I sat down, he looked across the table, and he said, they tell me you're a preacher. I said, they tell you right. He said, I want to go on record right now. I don't like preachers. I said, well, I've seen a few I wasn't overly fond of myself. <laughs> and I have, you know. I didn't get offended. I just kept going. He had a terminal illness, and I'd go talk to him about coming to the Lord. And went one day and before I could say anything he said David and he started crying he said I, I've got all that fixed up that was wrong I said well that's great Jim when he died I, I had the opportunity to preach his funeral and, and I've often thought what if I'd have got offended when he said he didn't like preachers Christians ought to have some kind of tough armor, I think, that the Lord gives us that we are not easily offended and we don't run every time the enemy shows up. It's his church, so uh, I can picture my mama. I can still see her standing there saying to me, don't forget where you come from. I'm persuaded that the Lord stands now and looks us over and said, don't forget where you come from, church. Be like the early church. If it's okay and with you, would you stand and, 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 and sir, would you come? And I want us to sing number 229. And what this song says is that we have finished the course. I'll meet you in the morning over there. If you have a need, I, I, if you'd say, Preacher, I'd just love to be closer to the Lord. Uh, I, I wonder if you would acknowledge it and the Lord would, would, would accept that. If you would just come out from where you are and come down here. This don't save you. I, I just want you to come down and shake my hand and say, Preacher, uh, the Lord's saved me and I'm blessed and I'm going to meet you in the morning. God bless you.